per centimeter, second, and third. Your feet needs to be completely turned to the back in order to step. Now the really important part about the step is that you don't bring your arms too far in front of you. <laughs> Then the seventh kata, Sampo Giri. First enemy, second, and third. Ah, uh, the swing is much better than the sixth one. Mm -hmm. And sheath, and step back. Now you should really focus on the enemy that's in the front. You have three enemies on two of your sides and one in the front, but the front enemy is the strongest. So you should keep your eyes on him as he attack the two other enemies. Just like the sixth kata, you do do another nukitsuke towards your enemies, but this is a little bit different from the nukitsuke that you did with the sixth kata. This time the tsuba is not at your mouth height, but it needs to be as high as your eyes. So it needs to be really, really high. But if you can see, I think that my nukitsuke is definitely not high enough. I think it's stopping around my mouth. So it absolutely should be much higher. That's one bad point. Because unlike the sixth kata, we're aiming from the cheek down to the chin. The seventh kata, you're aiming from above the head, actually, to cut the enemy's face. And the third, the last cut too, is rather okay compared to the sixth kata that I did, but still you can see that it's not completely straight, right? Yeah, it's kind of moving a, moving a little bit to the side. You can see that's, that's probably the unbalancedness of my two hands. It's either I'm putting too much power into my right hand or my power on my left hand is not enough. And for the jōdan no kamae, this position, it's really hard to tell just from this video, but again, the same as the hasson kamae, as we did with the fifth kata, it needs to be a 45 degrees angle. Basically, the difference between a jola and a hasso is just the position of the sword, if you have it here or if you have it higher. So it needs to be exactly the same. The angle of the blade needs to be exactly the same. Then the eighth kata, ganmen ate. Hit. Mm, okay. Mmm, that doesn't look so good. And cheat and step back. For the gammen ate, it's really close to that skate, right? But where you're aiming for is completely different. For the gammen ate, you're actually aiming right between the eyes of the enemy here. So it needs to be actually pretty high. For that though, taking a look at the position where I hit, if you can see the height of my face and the height of the tip of the angle, if you align it, I think it will be really close to this position. So I think that position is good. And the second thing you need to really look out for is when you turn around to stab, your feet needs to be completely turned to the back in order to step. But I think because it's something that you really often talk about when you do this eighth kata, I'm doing rather okay. It could be twisted even more towards the enemy behind me, but uh, it's, it has been worse before, so I can see some improvement there. And after you stab the enemy behind you, the next thing that I'm most concerned about, which has not been well improved, is me swinging the katana down. So after you stab with one hand, you turn around to grab your sword to swing down, right? It's really important that when you stab, turn around, and you bring your left hand to your handle, you don't come from the side like this, no. It'll be unbalanced, you'll lose control of your katana. So what you need to do is as you bring your katana above top of your hand with your right hand, your left hand needs to come up from the center of your body. So if you naturally bring your hand down back to the same position, it gives you a straight cut. But if you can see in this video, I did have this inside my mind, but you can see that my hands are trying to go and catch my katana to the side. So that is not a good thing. I should really keep my left hand to the center of the body and just literally bring it down straightly. This though is actually the same for the first kata too. After doing the nukitsuke, when you bring the sword above top of your head, the left hand needs to come up from the center of your body to do the swinging. This is very important for better control of the katana. So then the ninth kata, soetezuki. 
All right, let's take a look at it. Mm, okay. Yeah, this is another really, really difficult kata for me especially. I think that the first thing that caught my eyes was my swing is a little bit low. You can see that the tip is a little bit lower than my hand. This needs to be parallel or actually a little bit higher might even be better. Lower, absolutely not good because you're attacking the person standing next to you, right? It's impossible for you to swing that low. Now, the really important part about the stab is that you don't bring your arms too far in front of you. It's not about bringing your hands to the front. My sensei has taught me that it's more about closing this area, this arm area. So when you're about to stab, you close this area and then your hands don't go too much to the front and you'll lose control. You should keep your fist around the front of your belly button. However, for me, this is really, really difficult because I always say this often when I talk about katanas and martial arts, but I have really, really long arms. Whenever I buy kimono, for example, I always have extended cloth on the end of my sleeves to make them longer because I have really, really long arms. So when I try to do it exactly as how the textbook says, my hands feel really, really uncomfortable keeping my hands in front of the belly button and such. So I try to make it look as natural as possible, but my hands do go a little bit more forward than my belly button. This is a really, really difficult part about the, about the 12 standard kata. And the chibudi, the height is completely different from all the other chibudi. And you can see this is the same as the fifth kata. You grab on to the entrance of the sheath immediately. So next is the 10th kata. Now this is a very difficult one too. Hit, stab the enemy in front. And swing, and one last swing. Ah. You can see that all of my swings, the tip is lower than my handle. It's not parallel to the ground. This was a really, really hot September day, and I was starting to sweat like crazy around this time. It's like 35 degrees Celsius or something. Uh, completely have lost my concentration probably. I'm doing terrible. But one really important thing for this 10th kata is that is because you're standing up, you shouldn't, when you stab the enemy behind you, you shouldn't look down. If you look down, that's incorrect. You need to be keeping your face up. This is very difficult to do because all of the other kata, you don't have to focus on that so much. But for the 10th kata, because you have to, to face all four directions, you need to really focus on where your eyes are, where your head, head is. Because if you're not, if you're looking here, you're not looking at your enemy, right? So I did try to focus on that as much as possible. And you can see my eyesights are um, about the height of my own eyesights looking straight forward. So I think that's a good thing. And again, after the stabbing, when I turn around to swing, it's the same thing. I need to bring my hand from the center of my body to bring the katana down. But you can see that my hands are coming from the side, which is not good. And for almost all of the swings I do in this 10th kata, the tip of my blade is all lower than my handle. So that's not a really good sign either. This is like a B minus, I think. And for the 10th kata, it's really, really important to imagine that you have like a X mark in front of you and then you're, that you're attacking the right position constantly. But for me, I think you can see that from my starting position, probably my third cut, the cut that I did to the right, and also the one that I did towards my last enemy, I think the position is way too much to the side, too close to the camera, I think. So if I was doing this in person, it's really hard to tell from the camera because of all the angles and such, but if I was seeing myself in person, I probably would have definitely have to fix that as well. I think the first X from my beginning position, I think I have not actually correctly attacked the enemy. The next up is the 11th kata. Okay. Ah, so many stepping. So difficult. Side cut. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Terrible. Horrible shogo. Come on. Now that was a terrible blow at the end. You have to step back a lot. Mm. You're actually trying to do five cuts in total. So you first aim for the 
face, next down to the suigetsu, which is around the middle of the body, around just a little bit higher than the stomach, and then down to the waist, the third cut. And then you cut completely sideways, suiheigiri, and then you do one straight cut, makko, at the very end. But what's really important for each cut is that once you attack, you need to aim perfectly towards the face first, and then the stomach, and then down to the waist every time. But it's really important that after you swing, you come back the same path to bring the katana up, you cut, you come back the same path, and you cut, you come back the same path, and you cut. I did try to focus on that. You can see that the tip of my katana is going back the same line that it drew when it cut. So that is a good thing. But I'm pretty sure, I can't see myself behind me, but I'm pretty sure that the tip is lower than my handle every time when I bring the katana up. And also another thing that concerned me is when I position my katana here to the side to do the suihegiri, you can see that the tip is very, very lower, much lower than my handle when I bring my hand here. So I really need to keep the sword parallel to the ground when I position my katana here too. And the final cut is the worst one. You can easily see that when I swing the katana down, I'm bringing my body up. It's because that the most difficult part about the sogiri is actually your footwork. You need to press with the leg behind you. So that would be your left leg. You need to press with the left leg press with left leg, you don't step forward with your right. It's more of pressing with your left leg. And again, always, for all of these kata, you need to keep the same body height. But because you have to step forward, step forward, step forward so much to the front, towards the end, it gets more and more difficult. Because if you miss your distance between the two feet, it gets more and more uncomfortable at the end. And that's the reason why I tend to do this. I go like that and go up, you know, trying to maintain balance, but no. Again, lower, lower, keeping my body as low as possible, keeping the same height every time. Keeping the same height every time is really important. That's definitely something I need to look out for. And finally, the 12 kata. Hmm. <laughs> what the heck am I doing? That was terrible. You see, I'm definitely losing concentration towards the end of these katas. So you draw the katana as you step back. And again, this is really important because it's the timing when you put your two hands together. Yes, you need to bring the, your hands from the center of your body. I am actually surprised that I'm actually doing a pretty good job for this. But I'm pretty sure that the tip was a lot lower than my handle, again, <laughs> as I always say. And you can see the line I'm drawing with my sword is not straight. It's wibbling around a little bit. It's because you have to step back and step forward and it's really, really difficult to maintain balance. But of course, if you've been training many years, you should be able to do this though. And the worst part about this one <laughs> is that I'm losing balance as I step back. You probably have noticed that the floor of my dojo is actually not a wooden flooring, but it's tatami mats and it's very soft and squishy. So it is a little bit difficult to maintain balance, but mm, I shouldn't be complaining because if this was back in a time when the samurais were alive and if you actually got into a fight, you can't complain about it, right? Oh no, wait, I, I, you can't fight me right now. The, the ground is a little bit bumpy and I can't fight you here. That doesn't work, right? So you need to be able to do these kata in any situation so I cannot complain about that. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. So it's really, really embarrassing to see myself do the kata like this. You know, the image that you have inside your head that you're thinking that you can do it, I'm doing it like this, but when you watch it through the video, you're absolutely not doing it like that, you know? So I think it's really important for me to sometimes take videos of myself doing it and check it, check it with you guys. Maybe if I have another occasion, maybe next year when I have an occasion to take part in another tournament, I might do something really similar to check the kata with you. And again, the, there were only two cameras that I used when I was doing the filming, but if there's anything else that you notice that I should fix or something that you've been taught from your sensei, it'd be great if you can let me know in the comments and share your ideas and experiences with me. And I'll see you in the next video where I talk about Yaido. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.